Hello info person, this is Anton and it's about time we've talked about Venus once again because we do have some really exciting discoveries coming from our sister planet. The second planet from the Sun and a planet with a relatively comparable size and composition to planet Earth. But obviously with almost extreme opposites when it comes to the surface temperature, pressure and conditions required for life. Venus is super hot, super acidic and contains the thickest and most unfriendly to life atmosphere known to us. As a matter of fact, for decades, Venus has always been kind of used as a potential warning or a cautionary tale for what might happen to planet Earth one day if the plate tectonics and geological activity on Earth stop and if it experiences what's known as a runaway greenhouse effect. But despite of these previous assumptions and these previous studies, in recent months we've actually had some really exciting discoveries that are technically somewhat strange and somewhat unexpected. But most of them were done by reanalyzing decades of archival data and also running sophisticated computer simulations, with most of these discoveries hinting on Venus not actually being as geologically dead as we thought and even not being an entirely inhospitable sterilized world either and instead being a planet that's surprisingly protected, actively moving and evolving, and also a planet that uh, may hide some kind of a danger or some kind of a significant threat for planet Earth. We'll discuss this near the end. But really the fundamental question when it comes to Venus has always been about the possibility of life, and especially life in its atmosphere. Because even though the surface is quite extreme, Venus does possess a potentially habitable zone inside its clouds. This is located about 40 to 60 kilometers above the surface. And it's in this altitude that the range of temperatures and pressures is actually surprisingly similar to what we have right here on planet Earth. One atmospheric pressure and usually about 30 to 40 degrees Celsius. But here there was always this one major obstacle that was kind of difficult to explain. Well, because this is in the upper atmosphere, there's also very likely a lot of radiation. And unlike Earth, Venus lacks global magnetic field, or magnetosphere, necessary to shield life from potential cosmic dangers. And so here intense cosmic radiation and the radiation from the Sun would probably sterilize the entire cloud layer, preventing any life from surviving. But this is where we have our first major unexpected discovery. Turns out the Venusian atmosphere may have its own radiation shield. And so based on this recent study by Luis Ancordoqui, who used advanced simulations to analyze billion cosmic ray showers penetrating the Venusian atmosphere, researchers essentially concluded that Venus potentially has enough atmosphere to provide adequate radiation protection for anything that wants to live in these somewhat habitable conditions. And so here radiation levels in the potentially habitable cloud layer are remarkably similar to the radiation levels on the Earth's surface which suggests that cosmic radiation and even radiation from the Sun should not significantly hinder potential microbial life. Which by itself is a pretty exciting discovery. It means that the radiation is not really a concern after all. But secondly, we have a somewhat related finding concerning the actual composition of these clouds. Because here a long-standing assumption was that Venusian clouds are mostly made out of sulfuric acid which is something we've discussed in a lot of previous videos and something that has been assumed based on initial observations. But some of the recent reanalysis of the 1970s Pioneer Venus large probe data revealed something really important. There might have been something that was kind of miscalculated. By looking at how particles clogged the probe's inlets and how everything burned off at different temperatures, researchers determined that the clouds seem to be actually made out of water and specifically water bound in various hydrated materials, which is actually a kind of a shocking discovery. And so here the analysis suggested that 62% of cloud aerosols were most likely made out of various hydrates, specifically hydrated ferric sulfate and hydrated magnesium sulfate whereas sulfuric acid only represented 22%. And so this recent reanalysis that you can find in the description below possibly completely changes what we thought about Venus and its atmosphere. Although here I guess it's important to add that this is still not pure water. This is water tied in highly acidic materials and basically substances that contain water as part of the molecular structure. And so normally these are basically inorganic salts that may contain water molecules if combined by some kind of a reaction. Here's actually a really good visual example between cobalt chloride without water and cobalt chloride with water. And here's what this ferric sulfate or iron sulfate would look like, whereas here's what the magnesium sulfate would look like. But obviously in this case this would be all aerosols, just part of the atmosphere. 
Either way though, assuming this is correct and confirmed by other studies, this finding could transform our view of habitability and of course redefine the idea behind scarcity of water, which has always been a major argument against why life on Venus is impossible. If the study is correct, there seems to be quite a lot of water out there, and so life just has to find a way to access it. And so these are actually some of the most exciting discoveries from the Venusian atmosphere in the last few years. But then we have discoveries from the surface as well. Because for decades, a lot of scientists viewed Venus as geologically stagnant. Basically a planet that maybe once upon a time had some kind of a geological activity, but has not had any major eruptions for a very long time. And especially when it comes to any kind of a plate tectonic activity, which is what's really important for the survival of life on Earth. But a lot of new research seems to strengthen the idea that Venus is geologically alive after all. And this discovery comes from reanalyzing 30-year-old gravity and topography data from the NASA's Magellan spacecraft. The spacecraft that was able to scan Venusian surface, producing relatively accurate maps that we still use today. Here it was able to see through Venusian atmosphere by using synthetic aperture radar. And in this case, scientists focus on very large, ring-shaped volcanic features known as corona, which very often resemble something like this. And these features usually form when plumes of hot molten material rise from the planet's interior. And this usually causes the crust to push up and then the dome to finally collapse. And so by simulating the formation of these structures, researchers definitively confirmed that this seems to align with active geological processes. Out of 75 corona analyzed, 52 appear to sit directly above buoyant mantle plumes, indicating ongoing active processes that seem to drive their formation. With researchers suggesting that these tectonic-like processes may have also been somewhat common in the early Earth's history, but were then taken over by the plate tectonics that we have today. So this is sort of like what primitive Earth might have had as well, but for some reason Earth then changed, whereas Venus very likely didn't. But somewhat related to this discovery, we have another study from just a few days back. This new study discovers what seems to be signs of lava tubes on the Venusian surface. And these are usually natural underground tunnels formed when surface lava cools down, but the interior continues flowing. And so in this study, researchers identified four clear curving chains that seem to mark the roofs of these tubes when they collapse. And it was the curving downhill orientation of these features that convinced the team that they seem to be indeed lava tubes and not something caused by some kind of a tectonic stretching. Which along with several other clues we've discussed in one of the previous videos in the description, essentially confirms some of the recent volcanic history on Venus that's been hinted by several studies. And while we know of lava tubes on Earth and the Moon and even on Mars, unusually Venusian tunnels seem to be really large with volumes that are similar to lunar lava tubes, despite Venusian gravity. And here it's assumed to be maybe the result of extreme Venusian atmosphere and extreme temperatures. But in reality it's actually unclear why they're so much larger than anything on Earth. But because these are natural caves, in theory they can also provide certain types of protection for maybe something really cool to exist inside. But because there's so much heat and potentially a lot of corrosive materials, we have no idea what could possibly exist inside. Either way, exciting discoveries from the surface. Additionally, there was one other study that also hinted at a previous massive collision on the Venusian surface. This is obviously very hypothetical, but just like with planet Earth and pretty much most planets in the solar system, Venus might have experienced a giant impact during its early evolution. Now, right now there's not a lot of evidence for this, but because these giant impacts were pretty common, here researchers decided to simulate various impacts involving objects anywhere from 1 to 10% Earth masses moving at various velocities. And the idea was to see if they can create something that resembles modern Venus, with the results showing that quite a wide range of impacts is actually consistent with present Venusian conditions, especially the slow retrograde rotation and even explaining the lack of Venusian moon. And so here the fact that Venus does not have a moon and that it rotates so slowly could technically be explained by some kind of a head-on collision with a Mars-sized body which would be somewhat similar to what happened to planet Earth, except that in our case, it also created the moon. But right now, this is just a hypothesis. Although when it comes to impacts, this is when we come to this somewhat unique danger that Venus does pose for our own planet. Because here, based on new computer simulations, scientists now think there is an unknown swarm of orbital asteroids that potentially hide very close to Venus. Now, pretty much most planets in the solar system have orbital asteroids, and these are basically asteroids that share the orbit and usually have a one-to-one -one orbital resonance 
with the planet itself. And though sometimes they assume relatively stable positions near the Lagrange points, sometimes they can also do something entirely different and have a somewhat unstable orbit that changes over the years. And so based on this recent study you can find in a description, researchers decided to run simulations and do some number crunching to find out how many of such possible asteroids could be hiding around Venus. Now currently there are only 20 known co-orbitals, so basically asteroids that have the same orbit as Venus, but a lot more are suspected. And the thing is, these rocks are kind of significant because most of them are at least 140 meters or 460 feet in size, and their size is large enough to classify as a city killer asteroid. Basically something that can produce a major explosion. But much more importantly, they are very difficult to find because of one important thing. They are likely being obscured by a lot of solar glare. So basically, because of their orbit around Venus and because of their position, they are just super difficult to find because the Sun is just hiding them. And because Venus is one of the Earth's closest neighbors, and also because the orbit in this case can be sometimes chaotic, quite a few of these co-orbitals may pass very close to planet Earth, with Earth's gravity potentially pulling them away from Venus and possibly putting them on a collision course with planet Earth. Which is actually not a new danger and has been addressed in a lot of other papers. And so in this new study by Valerio Carubo, researchers simulated trajectories of low eccentricity asteroids over a period of 36,000 years, with simulations confirming that at least some of these undiscovered co-orbitals can indeed collide with our own planet. But I guess here it's crucial to note that this research looked at thousands of years in the future, so this is not going to be happening anytime soon. There is no immediate threat and there are definitely no known asteroids that are going to be colliding in the next few hundreds of years. But this research is nevertheless really important because it highlights a potential danger of hidden asteroids that are actually difficult to find just because of where they're located. And the best way to find them and to map this location is to possibly send a dedicated telescope into the Venusian orbit. By positioning something around Venus, we can then start uncovering these asteroids much easier, discovering if they're hazardous or not. But at the moment, no such mission is planned, and the only missions that are going to Venus are mostly going to be focusing on exploring its atmosphere. Here we have the NASA's Da Vinci mission and the Veritas mission, you can learn about these in the description below, but also ESA's Envision mission, which is going to carry a subsurface radar sounder, helping us possibly discover more of these lava tubes or additional volcanic features. Likewise, China has also been saying that they might launch something here between 2028 and 2035, and possibly even be the first nation to bring samples back to Earth. And if they can pull it off, that would be super exciting. And then we have some conceptual missions that we don't really know if they're ever going to happen, but they still sound pretty cool. Most of these missions usually involve balloons. For example, the EV project or exploring Venus with electrolysis suggests using what's known as MOXIE experiment, which actually has been tested on Mars before, to convert carbon dioxide into oxygen and carbon monoxide, which can then replenish the balloon for constant buoyancy. In other words, in theory, we can create a balloon that never falls down and can even be used to generate its own electricity by then running it in reverse. This would definitely solve a massive battery problem and allow us to maintain buoyancy, creating a kind of a permanent atmospheric mission. But none of this is being planned or even discussed yet, and this is just a hypothetical proposition. And so chances are that, just like previous balloon propositions, it might not go anywhere, unfortunately. It would be super cool to have one of these balloons on Venus, but ever since the missions in the 80s by the Soviet Union, nothing so far has happened. To which I say, can't I just have at least one balloon, please? But anyway, ultimately pretty much all of these missions and pretty much all of these theoretical studies help us understand fundamental processes in planetary evolution. And so here, by learning about our sister planet, we can then start making assumptions about planet Earth and of course about exoplanets that might have similar conditions. But I guess it's really these exciting discoveries from the Venusian atmosphere and the fact that Venus seems to be way more dynamic than we thought that are probably the most surprising in just the last few months. And so the fact that there is a habitable zone after all and it's shielded from radiation and may even have certain water molecules is definitely something nobody expected and could be super exciting for future research. And so with these new discoveries and with upcoming missions, 
conditions, we might have to reassess what we thought about Venus, and it might lead to some incredible discoveries in the next few years. But until then, check out some of the previous videos in the description, thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support the channel on Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads and can DM me directly, or by joining a channel membership that grants you early access. Alternatively, you can also buy the wonderful person t-shirt in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.